Council. What do you think is revolutionary about your approach? And how do you think you can protect yourself against the potential excesses of the necessity for, for relatively radical change? I think that there are a couple of unique attributes here for me. One is it does, does take somebody who comes in as an outsider. You cannot be beholden to the existing system. One of the things that actually constrains the revolutionary impulse, and you could argue whether this is good or bad or neutral, but it's just a fact, is the influence of large donors in the Republican Party. There is a version of the world in which they, I mean, there's, a, there's an institutionalized function that large donors play, and it's to sort of tame candidates to get them back on a few set of accepted messages that then become eventually the agenda they use to govern. You could argue that there is a, a conservative function there, conserving the status quo in a way that some people may argue is good. I think, I, I, I think that there are positives and negatives, but I think the negatives outweigh the positives greatly in the current moment. For whatever it's good, you could debate whether this is good or bad. I am not constrained by that. I'm totally unconstrained by that because I'm not playing the mega super PAC puppet game. I am independent. I have put now more than the last time that we spoke, I've put over $15 million of my own hard-earned money into this campaign. And we have 70,000 plus small dollar donors. The online fundraising is now, you know, just digital small dollar fundraising is now hit a snowball effect where it's just continuing to accelerate day by day. That's what's lifting this campaign up. And so- that's one of the constraints that doesn't apply to me. That much, I think, was also true largely of Trump. I think it takes a unique combination, though, because where Trump got tripped up with draining the swamp, gutting the deep state, is what the same members of that managerial class told him when he got into office. They told him lies, but lies that he was forced to believe because he didn't have independent knowledge to know any better, which is that you can't fire civil servants without without running afoul of the civil service protections, which are these extensive laws designed to protect individual bureaucrats from firing by the U.S. president. Trump's instincts were in the right place. I actually think he was an excellent president in this regard, but he was not able to implement his own agenda. He was able to expose the problem because the people around him told him a bunch of lies. Why are they lies? Well, my suggestion is read the law. Just those civil service protections, to use one example among hundreds, those civil service protections protect against individual employee firings. They do not apply to mass layoffs on their own terms. The law just doesn't apply to mass layoffs. Mass layoffs are absolutely what I am bringing to the D.C. bureaucracy. I have said that I will lay off over 75% of the federal employee bureaucrat headcount by the end of the first term. 50% by the end of the first year. And we've all already offered unprecedented detail on exactly how we will do it, on which of the remaining minority employees in the FBI, minority number of employees, will move to the U.S. Marshals or to the Drug Enforcement Agency or to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which small sliver of the U.S. Department of Education will move to the U.S. Department of Labor so that we neither need an FBI nor a Department of Education and we can get into those details, but you're asking about a question of personal attribute. And I think that the personal attribute that really matters here is that we need a U.S. president that is at once an outsider to that system, uncaptured, unbeholden by the donor class and the managerial class, but at the same time who has a deep, first personal, bone-deep understanding of how to actually get that job done, and a deep understanding of the laws and the constitution of this country. Okay, that so, is so what I think is actually you. a rare combination that I'm bringing to the table. Okay.